The content and information provided within this video is for informational and educational purposes only. The information provided within this presentation is not to be considered medical advice. Please consult with your treating medical physician. Welcome to the first video in our Coming to the Table series. Along with the companion print materials, these videos are designed to support those caring for medically complex children with neuromuscular challenges. Lyle. We hope that the guidelines we will present will help these children to experience more enjoyable and safer oral feeding experiences both at home and at school. Hi, I'm Mary Ann Gellert-Jones a speech-language pathologist and clinical feeding specialist at HMS School for Children with Cerebral Palsy in Philadelphia. I have been serving families and children with feeding impairments for over 30 years. One area of need across virtually all caregivers and paraprofessionals with whom I've worked is properly aligning each child's body position for effective feeding. Because this is so important to understand, we urge you to participate in the physical exercises I'll be describing in a minute. To fully prepare for that, I urge you to pause the video and get a glass of water, then resume play. We'll get to those exercises in a moment, but first let me tell you what you will learn. After watching this video, you'll understand why the proper positioning of the pelvis trunk and lower extremities is critical to achieving appropriate head and neck alignment for oral feeding and other essential activities. You'll also learn what poor positioning looks like, what proper positioning looks like, and how to make positioning adjustments so you can make feeding as comfortable and successful as possible for your child. One of the most important things you can do for your child before feeding is to make certain they are seated properly. If your child is struggling to hold themselves up to eat, they can't dedicate their energy to eating and swallowing. Poor positioning can also impact the alignment of the head and neck, which influences the efficiency of the mouth and oral structures during feeding. Breathing and swallowing are also affected by poor positioning. Optimal respiratory support for safe feeding and swallowing is impacted when the trunk is out of alignment. Think about building a tower with blocks. A sturdy tower must have a strong and stable base. Then each block must be placed in the best possible alignment to keep the tower from tumbling over. If one block is out of place, it can cause the tower to be unstable or fall. In this way, the body is very similar. It is extremely important that the body is in appropriate alignment, so it is stable and not out of alignment. It is also essential that all body parts are positioned properly to make certain that they have the best opportunity to function to their fullest. For example, if you have ever been in a reclined position and tried to drink a cup of tea, you may very likely have choked or had something go down the wrong way. Even people with typical muscle tone, when out of appropriate alignment, may hold their breath, tighten their muscles, and by doing this, they attempt to make their body more stable to try to swallow safely. But this will influence breathing, and in turn, the function of all the structures involved in feeding and swallowing. It is easy to imagine in this situation, even someone who has full mobility and more typical motor skills could find feeding and swallowing challenging. Now you may more fully appreciate what can happen when someone with neuromuscular challenges is trying to eat and swallow but is poorly positioned. In addressing safe positioning of children with medically complex needs for feeding, the most important part of the body is the pelvis or the bottom. In our tower, this is the lowest block and the base upon which all the other body parts are stacked. For this reason, it is essential that you help the child to be seated in a stable chair that has sufficient strapping 
and supports that allow the child to maintain an appropriate position throughout the entire meal. If the pelvis is crooked, the rest of the body will also be crooked or fall to one side. This will cause the child to stiffen, hold his or her breath, and try to compensate in any manner possible to create a safe way to eat and swallow. In the absence of seating equipment, it is possible to position a small child on your lap for feeding, though it is not optimal. You must make certain that the child's pelvis is as stable as possible and that he or she is able to maintain that position. Ideally, when feeding a child, the pelvis will be positioned at or very close to 90 degrees, with the hips even and level in the chair. To drive home the importance of proper positioning, here's what I'd like you to do. Follow along. First, to experience what happens when the pelvis is out of alignment, I'd like you to shift your body so that most of your weight is positioned on one hip or one side of your bottom. What do you notice the rest of the body doing? Typically, you will shift your trunk, shoulders, and head to keep your upper body level. Our bodies function best when one's head is level with the horizon, so most people will compensate for the weight shift by pulling their upper bodies back in the opposite direction and righting their head. Now slump way down in your seat so that you are sitting on your lower spine like a bored teenager might slump. What happens to your head and neck? Does it move forward to align with your pelvis, which is now more forward as well? If you swallow water in this position, try it if you can. You may notice that it takes a little more effort than when you were sitting upright. Now take a moment and observe what happens to your breathing. If you have a full stomach, it often stops the lungs from fully expanding and breathing is impaired. It is really hard to eat if you can't breathe. So often children with muscle problems will slide out and end up in this position, especially if their seating is not well adjusted or if their seatbelt is not snug around their hips. This position can cause significant problems with breathing and swallowing. Now, Sit with your back arch so that your lower back is extended and your mid back is not even touching the chair. Children with lots of tightness or fluctuating muscle tone sometimes get into this hyperextended posture so they can be upright for feeding and other activities. They may even grab the back of their headrest or chair with one hand to stabilize their upper body. Are you extending your head and neck upward to stay upright in this position? Now, Take another small sip of water in this position and see what it feels like, and notice how your breathing changes. Often children in this position may hold their breath or have trouble breathing easily with a regular pattern. Children in this position may also have difficulty achieving lip closure to swallow food safely. If you open your mouth and lift your chin so you are looking at the ceiling, now I want you to try and close your lips. You may have noticed increased tightness and difficulty in closing your lips. Now, again, try swallowing a small sip of water without closing your lips. Do you see why helping a child achieve more of a chin tuck will be helpful? Remember that helping a child get in this optimal position starts with the proper positioning of the pelvis. Thank you if you participated in the experiential exercise. Now let's examine some common positioning challenges faced by children with complex motor difficulties. The first is slumping or posterior pelvic tilt. Look for sitting on the lower spine, rounding of the shoulders, the head and neck in a forward or drooped position, and difficulty breathing and swallowing. Notice how this child's head and neck come forward out of alignment. Feeding can be slow and labor intensive, and swallowing may be uncoordinated or painful. Now as the child is reseated, 
The pelvis is in a more neutral position. Look at the changes in the head and neck positioning. The alignment is much more appropriate to support feeding and swallowing. And breathing and trunk alignment is also improved. The next common position challenge is arching out of the chair or an anterior pelvic tilt. Its hallmarks are when the mid-back is arched away from the back of the chair, but the shoulders are touching the chair. The head and neck are extended, and the child is unable to achieve a chin tuck. The child has difficulty coordinating breathing and swallowing. And this child will often gulp during swallowing, which looks like they are chug-a-lugging when they swallow. Notice how this child's chin is up and unable to come into a chin tuck. She is having difficulty closing her lips on the cup. Difficulty maintaining lip closure through the swallow is also common. And you will often hear a gulping sound as the child struggles to control the swallow. Here is the same child after being reseated properly. Notice that once her pelvis has been repositioned, this child is better able to achieve a chin tuck. Sometimes the use of a chest harness can help influence a more flexed posture in the trunk and keep the child from extending her head and neck. The gulping sound should go away, and with better lip closure, there should be better control over food and liquid in this child's mouth. To make sure the pelvis is properly positioned to support the rest of the body, it should be all the way back in the chair and as close to 90 degrees at the hips as possible. It can be tricky to tell if they are all the way back in the chair. One way to check is to lean the child forward and notice how far away his or her bottom is from the back of the seat. You may be able to undo the chest harness, foot straps, and seat belt to reposition the child alone, but larger children and children with very tight muscles often require two people to lift and reposition their bottoms so that they are all the way back in the chair. Make sure the seat belt is the last strap you undo and the first one you put on once the child is reseated. A snug seat belt that rides low across the child's hips is essential. Otherwise, he or she will need to be repositioned multiple times throughout the meal. You can also check to make sure that the hips are level and even in the chair by finding the hip bones and making sure that when you are touching them with each hand that they feel even and level in the chair. Some children with hip problems or leg length discrepancies will not be able to achieve even and level positioning in seating. So do the best you can to get them as close to a symmetrical position as possible. Sometimes if a child has difficulty staying in proper alignment, placing a tacky piece of material such as rubberized drawer liner or Dyson material on the seat will help keep the child all the way back in their chair. In the absence of this kind of tacky material, if the child is still pushing or trying to slide out, you can try a towel roll under the knees. Or unweight one foot with a block. Or take a foot rest off to decrease pushing and extensor tone. Now let's review this checklist so you can refer to it each and every time you position your child for safe feeding. It's in the companion print materials. Is the child upright? Can the child be seated at or near 90 degrees at the hips and maintain that upright position? Is he or she symmetrical? Is the pelvis level and stable? Are the hips, knees, and feet all at 90 degrees? Are the feet stable and touching the floor or foot hangers? If not, foot support should be provided. Is the lap belt properly fitted and positioned? Is the wheelchair tray or a solid surface being used? And how does this aid in positioning for upper extremities and thoracic trunk extension? Is the head in a chin tuck position? If achieving a chin tuck position is not possible by using pelvic positioning and good postural alignment, then other supports can be employed. You can use common materials such as towel rolls, pool noodles, pieces of foam, or blocks to make adjustments. You'll know that you have achieved a successful meal when the child is stable, comfortable, and able to enjoy the meal with less interference from tone and positioning. 
The child is positioned with the best alignment that he or she can achieve and they can maintain it without fatigue or discomfort. And all seating and positioning needs have been addressed. Remember, the definition of a successful mealtime is not an empty plate. It's a mealtime in which both the child and the feeder can engage in enjoyable and safe feeding. I hope this video has helped you to understand just how important proper body positioning is to successful feeding. Please look at the companion print materials for additional information and ideas on how to effectively position your child to improve feeding. <music>